Happy Saturday morning. Welcome to Collider Mailbag. I'm your host, John Roca, and uh, I have as my guest today a man who suffered through E3 <laughs> this uh, week and has a little bit of a throat issue going on, but he has found the time to come on here and the energy to come on here to talk about some E3 questions and some movie and TV questions as well. Uh, Dennis Zhang, how are you, man? Uh, yeah, as you just mentioned, I'm under the weather. So I suffered, but also enjoyed. Yes. You know, like it's 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 both, right? Yeah. Well, you stayed sober, right? Whereas Dorian yes. was falling down uh, all over the place, climbing yeah, rock walls. Yeah, I didn't drink any alcohol <laughs> whatsoever. I didn't go to any parties. I just went to E3 to yeah to, to work. Were, were you? Uh, Do you go to E3 every year, or was it uh, this was a special? T- you spent no, more time I mean this, this is time. my fourth or fifth time. Okay. So okay. yeah, I don't go every single year, but uh, I go. I mean, for work, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think before I, I went for fun, maybe five or six years ago. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. So did you enjoy your experience overall? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. It's just one of those things where uh, you wish you could do more, right. but you, you oh, can't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Comic Con's the same way, right? There's just so much going on. Yeah. And there's a lot of lines. <laughs> so <laughs> so you kind of end up spending time in lines right. and waiting for stuff That's to happen. I hate that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then you, it's like Disneyland, right? Before Actually, before Fast Pass. Right. Like you're just waiting in line and you, get, you only get to go on like, Five rides, or right? Something like that. And and you and you can't even go on them multiple times unless you want to waste the whole day, yeah. Riding one ride two or three times, right? Exactly. Well, uh, you know, this is Collider Mailbag, not an E3 breakdown, <laughs> but we are going to talk about some E3 stuff here. We got some great questions from you, the fans. We really appreciate you know when we put the call out on social media, on Twitter, and on Instagram. Please remember to attach that hashtag Collider Mailbag. Makes it easier for me to find and pick them out to possibly talk about on the show. And if you don't like social media, you can always email us. Mailbag at Collider.com. That's how you do it. Mailbag at Collider.com. Send your questions in. Pour through them. Pick about 20. Send them on to my guest. My guest picks about five that they really like to talk about. And that's what we're going to do today. So let's get into it. Our first question is a Twitter question from at Harris. Harris EV9 asks, Given what we've seen at E3 this year, do you think it was smart of Sony not to come? Seems to me like their presence was felt even though they didn't even come. Dennis? Yeah, I think for this particular year, it was smart for them not to come. Because, okay. they, you know, they didn't have that much to show. Obviously, Death Stranding. That's why they released all the Death Stranding stuff uh, a few weeks before E3. Right. To get kind of the buzz going that people would still be talking about the game at E3. But them not spending the money to either do a press conference or have a big booth on the floor. Right. Plus you have other multi-platform games that are going to be on the PS4 anyway. So most most of the games are cross-platform mm-hmm. like, that are going to be on Xbox and uh, uh, PS4. And there's a little Nintendo Switch uh, crossover, but a little less because their, their system's different. But yeah. I think it was a smart move. I don't think it's a smart move for them to skip every year. Okay. I think next year they definitely have to be there because they're going to announce their new console, which Xbox did this year, which I'm sure Xbox is going to do again next year with more details. They kind of made the announcement at the Microsoft press conference, but it was very vague details, right? And then so I think next year they're going to come back again and give a lot more because it's going to launch at the end of next year. And I think Sony's going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it was smart this year to save some money because they didn't have that much to do. I mean, we have Last of Us Part Two that... We don't know. We don't have a release date. Right. Death Stranding, we do, which is uh, later this year. But then Ghost of Tsushima, no. Yeah, that's the one I'm waiting on. That Samurai yeah. one. I, you know, I don't buy, I don't uh, play a lot of those games anymore because mm-hmm. of time constraints. What have you? I have mostly the sports games. But Ghost of Tsushima was an incredible trailer. I yeah. think they released last year. And to get you excited for this game, and I've been waiting to get a release date on this one. It's one of those rare games that I really will buy and play all the way through. I'm still, you know, I'm still disappointing Dennis by not having got Red Dead yeah, yet. So, as a, you know. as, as a, a, yeah, how I much of know. a Western fan <laughs> you are. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, you're a bigger Western fan than than me. Well, they've dropped the price, so I may be getting it. And it's next week, like, my girlfriend's gone for three days, so yeah. I may that oh. may be, you know, old school, a 20-year-old playing video games, Roka. I, back. I think once you get into it, I mean, you already got hooked on the first 45 minutes. I really minutes. did, yeah, yes. which, we, we, which we played. Well, Sony did say um, in late in 2018 mm. they weren't coming this year uh they were looking for inventive opportunities to connect with its own community and you connect this to warner brothers not coming yeah, to yeah, hall yeah. h and so you're starting to see that maybe these conventions aren't the always aren't necessarily the go-to for these studios 
anymore. And I wonder if this is a symptom of that as well. And yes. Sony wants to do their own like Sony Fest. You know, maybe that's coming. Yes. You know, like D23 or it's Celebration. It's very dangerous. It's yeah. very dangerous because, yes, it is trending towards that way. First, it was like E3, Comic-Con or whatever. Right, uh, right. You know, as someone who's a camera and, and editing nerd at NAB, they have like the like Adobe, Apple, uh, Apple doesn't show up at NAB. They do their own thing on the side right, at the right. same time as NAB, yeah. uh, but they don't want to pay for the booth floor and whatever. So they do their own thing. The dangerous thing is, okay, uh, you know, there's tons of Marvel fans, right? Mm -hmm. You could easily do a Marvel con, right? Right, of course. Easily can do a DC con. Uh, I mean, yeah. D23 is like all Disney stuff, including right. Marvel, Star Wars. We already have Star Wars 1, Star Wars Celebration. I'm sure there's like, so it, when it comes to video games or movies or whatever, you can have those separate ones. But right. the problem is once you start segmenting those things out, then you're only speaking to your hardcore fan base, right. the ones that are willing to, because remember, most people, we, we, we get to enjoy going to all these different places for work, but uh, the average person probably can only go to one or two cons a year, yeah. right? Yeah, or right, maybe yeah. just one. Yeah. They got to pick one. So Comic-Con or E3 or whatever would be the ones that you go and then you get to you get to experience everything. If you're mm -hmm. a person that that enjoys, you know, different stuff mm -hmm. that you're not just like a solely I'm only a Marvel fan, I'm only a DC fan. Those are right. So I think that's the dangerous thing is once you start separating them apart, then you're only speaking to the hardcore fan base and then yeah. less and less people are going to show up and then you're, you know, yeah, you're at so well. Yeah, 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 so to speak. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens as this goes on because this seems to be an ever changing, evolving thing mm -hmm. as we move forward uh, with E3 and the other studios involved as well. All right, let's move on to our next mm -hmm. question. It's a Twitter question as well from Dump Thunder asks With games like Death Stranding and CP27 Z7 uh, showing off the high art side of gaming, are we at a place where Hollywood will begin investing its talent and money into a game itself as opposed to investing in a film version of a game? Are cinematics movie enough dennis what do you think um i do think so but not so much like these big triple a titles mm -hmm. like you're seeing more like they're trying to find more interactive ways i know annapurna yeah actually uh they have an annapurna interactive they have like mobile games they have another more of a indie style game i saw a trailer uh at the microsoft press conference so mm -hmm. and it's like a story-based game so they're dipping their toes into these type of things, but I don't think they're ready yet to like fund a triple because a, a triple A title is how much a, a big budget movie would cost. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And quite frankly, this is not their realm. This is not their expertise. Uh, right. And and I think we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this later okay. with uh, the Hollywood thing. But I would I know this is probably some people would get you know uh, upset or whatever. I think it'd be easier for a video game studio mm -hmm. to make a good movie than it is for a Hollywood studio to make a good video game. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you think some of their talents are lent to the video game side or do you think it's strictly separate? Um, Cause I mean, Sony, you talk about Sony, Sony's PlayStation, Sony has movie theaters, yes. obviously does movies uh, with Spider-Man and Venom and all that kind of jazz. So they have a relationship and most of these companies are, you know, have multiple brands mm -hmm. underneath their umbrella, like you have with Disney having all kinds of different things. That's, do you think that's, uh, do you think some people maybe uh, go over there or some people get called over to look at the stuff they're creating? Or do you think it's possibly, completely different? Possibly. But I mean, okay. obviously on the story front, that's where Hollywood can really help. But the reason yeah. why I say that is people in the video game industry, especially not all games, but some of them are more cinematic and more storytelling storytelling yeah. driven. So they have that, that experience and they have that idea and that can transfer over to movies where uh, people who do movies... Yeah. They don't really, it's not an interactive experience, True. right? Fair you, point. you don't yeah. know anything about like gameplay or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You you know about storytelling, which yeah. is which is important for for certain video games, but then when it comes down to gameplay, you're yeah. you're you're a little lost there. So. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think I think it's about uh, finances, right? It's about yeah. do they see 
that there is a profit at the end of the road for doing something like this. I think that's the first thing that they look at. And then second, uh, will they actually, be, will this be stepping on toes? Will, there, will this be confusion as it comes out? So that we'll see. But certainly the movies are getting to be incredibly so much more cinematic. We saw Keanu Reeves jump down and have his spot and mm -hmm. this uh, Death Stranding, of course, having Norman Reedus yeah. be a part of it. And we've seen this happen now more and more actors using their face with the, the Detroit one had a couple of actors mm -hmm. as well being used. Uh, uh, so that's all coming step by step, and we'll see. Will we see a David Fincher video game or a Christopher Nolan video game or even I, a Denis Villeneuve video game, Dune video game? Why not? The Dune produced, TV yes, not yeah. di not not directed, yeah, not, not like yeah. actually overseen. Maybe their name will be attached to something. We yeah. just, you know, there was an announcement. Uh, George R. R. Martin is working with From Software. Right. Uh, this this game called Elden Ring. He's using he, he's doing the story. Yeah. Do, creating the the basis of the background of the story. It's a very Lord of the Rings style. Uh, type of game, and then from software is developing. Maybe more like that. Yeah, you see that more yeah, of a possibility. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next question. It's a Twitter question as well. It's from Badger Cheese. 84, Collider Mailbag. Good morning, everyone. When we talk about Hollywood and the need for more diversity, when it comes to writers, why is there a stigma with comic video game book? Ooh, ooh let me see that again. <laughs> with comic video game book writers not getting opportunities to take on movies. Well, this is not always necessarily true, certainly from the comic book side. I mean, Jeff Johns is stepped away now from mm. DC. He's going to do his Green Lantern. Grant Morrison has been called in by Ezra Miller mm. to write, uh, to supposedly do a Flash treatment, which is, I think, their way of like removing Ezra Miller from the project. And then you have Tom King now recently uh, signing on to co-write with Ava DuVernay, the uh, Eternals film. So, yeah. uh, so there's... Uh, possibilities here all around that this is starting to, that these medium media are starting to blend these mm -hmm. medias are starting to blend and so I think that's certainly in play here um, it just takes time because yes there's been a stigma oh those are video games those mm -hmm. are for kids mm -hmm. they couldn't possibly understand this this is why they do what they do and then uh, you know film is something else or TV is something else but I think as fans are watching everything and feeling connected to all of it you're able to like make the transition a little more easier for fans to mm -hmm. accept uh, coming down. And of course, you can take that experience back into video games mm -hmm. when they write their next video game. That would be interesting. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the lines are definitely getting more blurred nowadays. We already seen that with with television and movies, yeah. We've seen actors uh, jumping back and forth and it's not as big a deal anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, with comic book writers, you know, Brian K. Vaughn is someone who wrote on Lost, right. and then he has his own uh, comic book series. Um, so I think that, it, yes, there is a stigma with, with the video games and comics, but it's becoming less so, especially now that comic books are being more respected, and then also video games also as well, because mm -hmm. it's, it's less of a kid thing now. Both comic books and video games are being taken much more seriously, they're right. taken more seriously because of money. I mean, yeah. they, they, right, that, right. They, they, don't don't get confused. The, the reason why <laughs> Hollywood like respects comic books and in video games is because of the money that they see. Right. If they could not bring in money, they wouldn't care. Right? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but then in, in, to come to your first point when you were like, talking about Hollywood and the need more the need for more diversity. They're not generally not talking about this. They're, they're, they're talking about yeah. they're talking about race. They're talking about gender. They're talking yeah. about uh, people behind and in front of the camera and yeah. that type of diversity where, yeah, you're talking about more diversity in terms of um, the type of people, I mm -hmm. guess, uh, working on stuff from their different type of fields. But, yeah, yeah I, that's not really I don't think that's the front. Uh, cent front mm. and center in, in that discussion. Also, with video game movies, they haven't been successful necessarily consistently in the theaters. Comic book movies have, yes. but you bring writers who are steeped in the comic book lore, like Marcus and McFeely, mm -hmm. and they step in and write their version. And sometimes, when you bring a comic book writer onto a film, you can have that issue like Frank Miller had yes. making the transition that you become way too dependent. Yeah, yeah, dependent on what you've written before yeah. and not be able to adjust for the medium of film. That can be an issue as well. So I don't think it's about diversity. I think what we're talking about is maybe, as uh, Dennis was saying, as these lines get more and more blurred, then you'll find talent that pops up that can play with it in all the sandboxes mm -hmm. and do well and understand how to adjust their game for the medium that they're working in. And I think that's going to be something that happens maybe in the next 10 years as this new crop of talent mm -hmm. comes 
comes popping up, they'll be able to flow seamlessly all in, in between uh, anything. And yeah, and, and that goes the other way too. Let's say you want to, you have a movie and you want to turn to a video game, yeah. right? That doesn't necessarily mean the guy who wrote the screenplay, let's say, for a particular movie, mm -hmm. would be the best person to write the story for the video game. Right, you know especially I mean? if they don't understand how video game stories exactly. work. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's just one of those things where being able, like you mentioned, being able to adapt to different medium mm -hmm. is, is more important. Yeah, th and I think that time is coming. Yeah. All right, our next question is an Instagram question. Mm -hmm. It comes from the Zuvich asks, Hey, at the Roka says, what is a movie that you did not like right after watching, but then later found yourself often thinking about and then eventually liking all after having only seen it once? For me, that movie is a clockwork orange. Thanks. Um, yeah, Dennis. This one's tough because usually movies that I don't like that maybe I change my mind about, it's it's because I see it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Versus like thinking about it mm -hmm. and whatnot. I think, I mean, obviously you can watch movies and maybe you'll like a certain movie. Like, okay, uh, Children of Men. I liked it when I first saw it. Right. But when I thought about it more and I watched it again, it got better and better you know what i mean and mm -hmm. then now i think it's fantastic so okay. i think it's one of those things I, one that i didn't like the first time i watched uh was uh the assassination of jesse james but oh uh, yeah the, just right. i thought it was very slow I thought, uh, maybe i was in the wrong mindset mm -hmm. it seemed kind of boring uh and then when i watched it again yeah i was like oh wow yeah. this is a fantastic movie you just yeah. have to get into you have to be in the right mood right because it's a very slow it's still a very slow burn it's a lyrical western yeah that's for sure so and it, it's not about gunplay or fighting you know no, what i mean not really no it's a more of a psychological exploration yeah, yeah so uh that was one i would say i changed my mind after seeing it again and i guess maybe thinking about maybe thinking about more to say let, let me give it a second chance right right and then and then change my mind i think that's what it is it's you see a movie and you're like Oh, I didn't like it as much as everyone else. Or mm -hmm. there's something here that came close, and then you just ruminate about it, ruminate about it, ruminate about it, because it won't let you go for whatever reason. And that inspires you to go back and watch it mm -hmm. again. And then you either confirm your suspicion or what you felt, or like Dennis said, you change your mind about it and embrace it and understand where the movie was coming from. I think Unbreakable was that like okay. that for me. I did not like Unbreakable the first time I watched okay. it. I, I thought. This is a, what is this? Oh, oh, this ending is like, oh, mm -hmm. Mr. Glass. And I didn't get it mm -hmm. then. But I kept thinking about it, thinking about it. Like, I don't understand how this movie. And then a friend just said one thing. Think of it as a comic book origin movie. And it unlocked the mm -hmm. entire film for me. And now it's one of my favorites. I think Watchmen is another one that I had mm -hmm. an issue with as well. Watchmen was one of those uh, situations where I watched it the first time. And I was so disappointed after that beginning but the imagery of what Snyder created here would mm -hmm. not let me go because I love Watchmen so much. So when there was a director's cut, I watched the director's cut and fell in love with the movie. Um, but it wouldn't let me go, and I had to watch it over. And I will defend Dark Knight Rises. I, mm -hmm. I have a thing about that film. I, I just don't understand uh, why I keep coming back to mm -hmm. it. And and this is going to shock some people, Batman vs. Superman. I would not say <laughs> it's a good movie, but it... For whatever reason, it does not let me go. And if I stumble upon it while I'm flipping channels on the pay channels or whatever, or flipping channels, where I will absolutely stop and watch. Director's I, cut? Yeah, director's cut or regular okay. cut. It's more a matter of like, this is such a massive car wreck in my mind. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I have, I'm have i called back to it to watch it over and over again. E e e either to say like, I can't believe they messed it up to mm -hmm. this level, or what am I missing here that keeps bringing me back to it that I'm trying to convince myself to like the film more mm -hmm. than I actually do because it's not the performances that bother me at all. It's more a matter of the construction of the film. So I guess I would say in the long run, Zack Snyder is an interesting director to me mm -hmm. because he does burrow his way to my brain for whatever reason, and I and I, I find myself coming back to his movies, although Sucker Punch absolutely sucked, and I'll never come yeah, back to that yeah, one. Yeah, that one that it was, was super a, terrible. It was a, one of those movies that are great for if you're in a bar, and you put the movie on, yeah. and there's no sound, and you're not paying attention, and it's just the vision. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's different. Music's already going on. You're right. not paying attention. You're drinking alcohol, and you're talking with people, and it happens to be on, the, <laughs> yeah, on that background. screen in this background. Because it's, it's visually very cool. It is visually incredible. In yeah. films. You can never argue that, especially a soccer punch. All right, let's move on to our last uh, question. It's an email from Kristen Smith. She writes, uh, hi, everyone. So this is not the typical question you all receive. I'm not even sure if this is the correct medium to ask this, but I figured I would give it a shot. 
I have been following you all for a couple of years now, and I love your work. I've always been interested in this kind of thing, and I was one, I was just wondering how would one go about getting to the position you are in now? Is there a certain degree needed? Any internship that might be available for the regular Joe to get their foot in the door? I would love to know uh, what you all did to get to where you are now. Sorry if I should not have written this here, but thanks for your time. Thanks for all the content, and keep doing what you're doing. Dennis. Uh, this is a complicated <coughs> yes. question for so many reasons. and a complicated answer because it's – really i don't know i don't think you really set out to do no this most people uh, don't i would never I, i'm mm. you know i i went to film school to shoot and edit and write and right. direct and just wound up here and i'm still trying to pursue the other stuff it's just <laughs> you know what i mean you you have a job and i like this job a lot and i yeah. and i found that being on camera to a certain extent, I don't you know do that as a as, as job, yeah. but like for for certain things that I'm passionate about, I, I enjoy doing yeah. and talking about, yep. like we're talking about today. Um, I would say, yeah, I, I, internship is is a nice way to get your foot in the door into a company, um, assistant work. That type of, getting your foot into the door is always important in seeing how companies work and mm -hmm. whatnot. And sometimes mm -hmm. you'll get chances, especially smaller companies. Yep. That'll, uh, not like we're a small company, but we're not like a big, large company either. So mm. another thing is doing multiple tasks. Nobody here is hired like strictly to be on camera. I mean, that's why yeah. everyone's like, man, you guys got a great, the greatest jobs in the world. It's like, we do have very good jobs. It's just that nobody here is like, okay, all, all we do is just yeah. sit here and, and talk about stuff. It's yeah. like, as soon as the, you stop watching this video, I gotta go run and edit some stuff. Yeah, shoot I gotta some run stuff. Off. Yeah, shoot stuff. You produce stuff. Yeah, like uh, everybody here is like doing three, four, five different jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm producing a VR video game right yeah, now. You know what yeah, I mean, like I, you know, that was not planned, right. but it just happened to, to to go that way. And so it's just one of those things. Be open to, to a lot of different things. Yeah, uh, anyone. Uh, I think I was, I was talking to Remsen uh, when we we're going to or coming back from E3 the mm -hmm. other day, and I was just he was telling me, you know, like just trying to be one certain thing it, it cuts you off because he i think he was just trying to be a, like a cameraman yeah, first yeah, and it's yeah. like you got to be open to be like editing camera like a lot multiple different uh things mm -hmm. and then you're more likely to get hired in yeah. this industry because you know even with the hosting thing it's yeah. like well you, number one thing after a hosting is like producing right because well, a lot of people are producer hosts mm -hmm. and then you could throw in either editing or shooting could also help as well mm -hmm. so. most yeah that's i think what dennis said is absolutely right in this business now those hosts you see that host things they're rarely just a host and if they are they're freelancers and mm -hmm. they're not necessarily full-time employees of that uh, particular channel yeah. which is why you see them bouncing around on mm -hmm. a number of channels i did that for a long time as a freelance host of podcasts and on camera and not for any money for a long time too with some money a little bit on the side mm -hmm. but not a lot of money it was about building your abilities and building your credibility having people see you handle multiple different types of shows mm -hmm. and host or be a pundit on them and that's how you build your credibility then it's about producing then it's about and i was i do writing i do producing here i do a number of things voiceover stuff working on these podcasts there's so many things that we do scheduling wise mm -hmm. uh, helping out assisting where we can showing up and doing what we can to make sure the overall goal is reached so you ask yourself how to get into something like this well first of all get as knowledgeable as you can and mm -hmm. be patient with yourself as you're getting as knowledgeable as you can and don't get caught up in the fact that you didn't get a job right away mm -hmm. it takes time for people to know who you are and to see who you are and look at how many people get hired or how many people get laid off all the time who've got an incredible amount of knowledge it's also timing it's also where you hit you know i'm very fortunate that i'm still employed here having started almost two years ago uh seeing all these other outlets drop away mm -hmm. or let people go so it's all a matter of timing being in the right position knowing the people making uh, connections networking and but also but i think the foundation is being as knowledgeable uh, as possible and being able to do multiple things at once so don't ever turn down an opportunity to learn uh, i'm still bothering that about learning how to edit mm -hmm. so i want to start doing that as as we go along as well to give me another tool in the box to use because you never know when it will be useful for you.
for you. So that's what we can say. And start your own YouTube channel, for God's <laughs> sakes. Don't worry that a million other people have their YouTube yeah. channels. Start something because it'll teach you how to do this practice. job on even the ground floor. Even if you floor. have no views, it's yeah, just practice. Even if you have no views, it's good practice. Absolutely. All right, well, that's our episode of Collider Mailbag. Hope we helped you on that last question, Kristen, and other people who might be watching and thinking of finding their way into this game. We'll see. Uh, and I want to appreciate it. And I want to say that I appreciate everyone sending your questions in. Thank you so much. They were great. They're always so extensive and deep and they're fun to talk about and i hope you enjoyed the show today as always when we put the call out for the questions on social media please put that hashtag collider mailbag on it uh when we do it on instagram and on twitter and uh, if you don't want to do social media you can email us at mailbag at collider.com want to thank dennis zen for stopping by dennis uh where can people find you brother you guys can find me on twitter at thinker or instagram dennis.tzng and yeah check out the collider games channel that's uh youtube.com slash collider games we have a podcast every week and we have a bunch of e3 coverage up there right now yeah a lot of great stuff you know other than dorian falling down drunk there's a lot of other <laughs> coverage as well which is great so uh, and you can follow me at the roca says on twitter and on instagram see all the multiple things i'm doing there as well so take care of yourselves and we'll talk to you tomorrow when forbes scott mendelson stops by to be my guest here on collider mailbag we're probably going to talk a lot of box office stuff and movie stuff as well take care have a great rest of your saturday